particularly when we, particularly you know as I started getting to that point you know that like, like with punk had gone um, you know that the whole two town son thing had finished and it was kind of that point in the early eighties when the new romantics were around and I just hated it basically I really did I just saw through it you know yeah the mob thing I've got you know it's, it's people looking smart and so on like yeah it's sharp it's got attitude and so on yeah. The casual thing I got as well, which was more football related than music related, but again, very, very, very working class, sharp, 80s mods effectively like mm-hmm. it, you know? But the new romantic thing, I didn't get. Music was dull, um, everything. I, I can remember like mid 80s, like in the Bunnymen, like in the Smiths, like in New Order, the Jesus and Mary chain, and stuff on Creation and Factory Records and not much else. It was awful, you know? It was, it was almost like back to that thing a decade before where everything was kind of, it just seemed to go wrong. And, um, that's when I dis- d- discovered that I like weed and, you know, mm. um, so stuff like, you know, getting into the, in the stuff that had inspired punk rock, you know, getting into the Velvets, mm. getting into the Birds as well, you know, um, getting into stuff like, you know, like the Stooges and the MC5 and the Dolls and things like this and, mm. and wanting, to, wanting to play guitar myself, you know, and, uh, and yeah, you know, so how did it influence me musically? Uh, it probably didn't, it was just, it was just really music was just an escape from the place because it was it was just dull you know and the place influenced you by making making you want to go away basically yeah pretty much <laughs> I, mean, I mean don't get me wrong it wasn't a hellish background isn't it? my, my no, 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 parents who I absolutely adore I you know, that. and they adore me you know but it, it, it was it was like um, there was just nothing there for me and every time I go back it just seems worse you know what I mean the curry house is fantastic and the local fish and ship shop ain't bad other than that the, the place is deadly you know what I mean you don't you, you don't want to go out down there and again you know when, when I go back and I meet people you know that, that, that I know from those times you know they're all drinking in a working men's club mm. and this is the deal they're all 40 somethings in some case 50 somethings and they were drinking in a working men's club when they were 20 somethings it's back to that away from the numbers thing by the jam, you know. I, was, I just didn't want this, you know. What I mean? Sort of inevitability. Yeah, no, I just already, didn't want it. Yeah, didn't want it at all. Okay. And then the, the other thing with, 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 with there as well, um, the, the political angle is quite strange because it is, you know, on, on the surface, you know, quite an ordinary, you know, working class town and so mm. on, like yeah. Um, in the nineteen ninety two election, it was the barometer for the country. Um, it was basically if Basman stayed Tory, the country. Would stay Tory, and sadly it did. Um, always a marginal seat. Um, quite often Tory MP, Labour Council. I mean, to my mm. great pride, uh, the evil witch from Grantham, Martha like Thatcher. She actually referred to Basildon as Moscow on the Thames in the eighties because mm. the council was so left wing. Which I, I mean, I, I, I'm beaming now as, I, as, as I'm saying this. Yeah, you know, because you've got to remember Moscow, of course, this is the eighties, Soviet Union, etc., mm. etc. You know. Um, the election, you know, the other day, um, the Tories got in again, but um, you know, UKIP annihilated the Labour vote, and mm. that's another thing. You know, people down there they don't really know their enemy. Um, lots of Afghanis, you know, you, you know, really kind of, um, you know, blame the foreigner. And, and Afghan was a big up from a sitcom in England. And you said there's an American equivalent. There is an American equivalent. So for any Americans, this, this, mm. um, I think the, the Alf Garnet in England was Archie Bunker mm. in um, in the one um, in, in the US version. Mm. The British version was called Till Death Is Do Part. I'm not sure what, what the American one was called. I don't know if it kept the same title, but yeah, it's essentially the same thing. Working class being a rallying against you know blacks, you know Jews, whatever, etc., etc., etc. Um, which is ironic because um, Warren Mitchell, who played Alf Garnet, was Jewish. Mm. Um, and Johnny Spade, who wrote it, who I suppose a bit like myself, another West Ham supporter as well, like Die Hard, but uh, didn't really have that kind of mentality, you know what I mean? You know, re- really, you know, could see that his you know, peers were, were, were bigoted and, you know, um, he created the Alf Garnet character basically to, to, to laugh at these people, you know? Mm. So, you know, from th- th- that. That side of things influenced me a lot as well. And I, I do sometimes try and put something political in. I mean, I, I wrote a song recently, I don't know whether the band will use it, called Farage Land. Farage Land, mm. yeah, you know, but Farage Land is how I pronounce it, right, yeah? Because mm. um, he is just, oh, he's, he's just an awful person. He, you know, re- really, I, I, I think I hate him more than I hate Thatcher. And, you know, he's, just, he's just utterly, utterly horrible. You know, he, 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 he's a pig. He's a bigger and so on, he, 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 and his party, they're, they're, they're just, oh, narrow-minded little ingrowers, 
exactly the type of people that I want to escape from. Mm. You know. Okay. Uh, can we talk about your band? We're going to talk about sort of music appreciation, but we want to talk about writing and performing. So. Right, okay, good. Tell us about your band. Good, but the band, um, the Red Telephones, um, I, I, I play guitar and sing in it. Um, I'm not the most tuned for the vocalist, as you probably hear, I'm a spoken voice, but, you know, I'm an old punk rocker and I couldn't really give a shit anyway, like, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, the aforementioned Woody is the drummer in the band. Um, Joe, Joe Wellwood, who doesn't come to the open mic, who's a wonderful bass player, he plays bass. To my right at the moment is Rob Green, who was the bass player in the, in the band briefly before. Um, the ubiquitous Porrick O'Connor um, plays uh, piano with us. And the Stars has been on stage with us before now, all types of people. But the, the real core of the band is me, Woody and Joe. We're the ones who rehearse every week. Got gigs coming we, up. We, 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 do you know, I'm looking for a gig at the moment. Um, I'm also looking to go into a recording studio because we've finally got some new stuff. Mm. Um, we gig two, three times a year, and quite honestly, that's enough because I think in a city like Madrid, where you're effectively relying on your mates to go and see you, let's be really, really honest mm. about this. None of us are going to be superstars, yeah. If you're out there gigging week in, week out, your mates are kind of, oh, well, they, they're playing again, I can't be bothered, and so on, like, you know. So for me, a few gigs in year is enough. Really, really, really it is. So then, from my point of view, it becomes more of an event. It's, ah, oh, you know, okay, I'm not for one minute suggesting people say this, but it's, ah, oh, okay, the red telephones are playing, they haven't played for six months, I'll go, you know. So that's the way I kind yeah. of try and do it. So you keep that. it fresher? Yeah? Huh? Keep it fresher? Yeah, yeah, pretty much so, yeah, you know, it's, it's that, that less is more thing, basically, you know? It's very organic to the dogs. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. Keeping yeah. it organic, the dogs are drowning. Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's back to that less <laughs> is more, you know, it, it's, um, it's kind of like, you know, you know, for somebody in my age as well, you know, having, you know, got sick, most of the bands I saw would have been back in the 80s, right, yeah? New Order, for example, almost never used to encore. Right. And it used to piss you off beyond comprehension, yeah, right. but it was kind of a little bit, ah, yeah, do you know what, okay, you play 10, 15 songs there and they're all good. Actually, enough's enough. Less is more. In yeah, well, right. Encores have totally lost their uh, spontaneity. Cause they, well, if, a, if a band doesn't encore, they'll just get lynched. You know, it's just, yeah, but it's become well, like a thing, they just go off and then come back it, two right, minutes right, later. Really, you know? I mean, most times when the telephones play, we're invariably supporting somebody else and can't do one anyway, like, you know, so, mm. um, yeah, it is a cliche, I agree with you. Have you ever topped uh, Pavarotti's 89 encores? I think it was 89. Well, Pavarotti's that, that would really get too much. Worse. I can't imagine people asking me to come back 89 times. He must have lost a lot of weight doing all those encores. Anyway, um, yeah, so what kind of music do you play? Is it punk and who writes well, it? Well, it's and... not... I write it. I yeah. mean, I mean um, it, it's not... Punk, I mean, yeah, it's a major influence. I mean, it's not just a major influence on my music, it's a major influence on my life, for God's sake. You mm. know, one of the reasons I am what I am is because of punk rock. Mm. 13 years of age, you're in the Pistons for the first time. Yep. My God, I can't describe to you how powerful that is. It's just, boof, everything makes sense, you know? Mm. And they were obviously the ones who kick-started this. And, of course, the one who followed on just behind them, the one that really influenced me, God, the Clash, man. Mm. They just mean everything. They mean everything in terms of the in, in terms of their anger, in terms of their attitude, in terms of the way that they were sharp enough to realise that this couldn't last forever, and they started incorporating reggae, rockabilly, mm. etc., etc., in their music. Mm. When you get to Sunday Easter, you're even in Calypso there for Christ's sake, you know. Mm. And then, of course, perhaps more importantly than, than anything with the Clash, is watching them as a 14-year-old on, on, on television on the it was a youth TV program called Something Else. I think it was Something Else. And uh, they, the young audience members are asking them about politics and they come out, you know, so, so, so firmly anti-racist. Mm. Really, you know, this is almost like their main agenda, that racism is evil. And late 70s Britain, the National Front were big, right, OK? Mm. Let's just say this, we need another clash now to fight bastards like UKIP and mm. the EDL and Britain First and so on. We need this now. And this is what depresses me about modern music and modern bands, Yeah. Um, nobody seems to be standing up against this. I'm sorry, I've digressed big time. No, it's yeah, fine. Because it's fine. You, you know you're asking me about influences. No, but it's I do absolutely feel this fine. is really, really important. Back to the music. The music mm. is, in some ways, the most important thing of all. Yeah, punk influence. But I mean, you, you hear bits of the Stones. You know, you know, late '60s, early '70s Stones in what we do. 